Hello and welcome to another episode of Culture Shock, your SPTV source for all things celebrity, movie, and TV. My name is Jackie Lang and tonight we'll be bringing you our Christmas special. We'll talk about some of the movies that will be coming out around the holidays and we'll finish off our list of our top five favorite Christmas movies. But first, let's jump into the world of celebrity and entertainment. On the CNE panel tonight, we have Julia Flaherty and we have Natalia Wright. Okay, so let's start off by talking about Lindsay Lohan. She was arrested last week after she allegedly punched a woman at a new nightclub in New York City. She was charged with assault and the alleged victim was a tourist visiting from Florida. Apparently, Lindsay has also been banned from the club where the incident occurred. Is this another case of someone just trying to stir up trouble or is this just classic insanity that we've learned to expect from Lilo? I don't know what to think of her anymore, but she did a parent trap, she did confessions of a teenage drama queen, and I really liked those. And then I thought she was getting back on track with the Liz and Dick on Lifetime, but... People have just, been bashing that really yeah. bad, saying that it's like the worst biopic ever done. And to be perfectly honest, I never understood how Lindsay Lohan was such a great dramatic actress. To be honest, Lindsay Lohan was my favorite actress just because of the parent trap. I, I kind of still feel bad for her in a way because she was a child actress and they just kind of get roped into things. And I wonder, part of that too, I mean we could go on forever about why she's crazy. And so I mean you can understand the parenting, like where she came from, probably not the best environment, especially like her dad, the way he's been in and all up in her career. Right. But in this instance, what, what does this woman, who's not even a native New Yorker, like what does she honestly have to gain if Lindsay Lohan didn't punch her? You know what I mean? Like, I can understand if you're gonna be, if you live in New York and you're like, oh, I'm gonna be here, I can sit on, I can sit right. on a trial, yeah. whatever, <laughs> I can get some money out of it. But like, but it, she's done crazier things. I don't put it past her for punching a woman in the face. Isn't it just recently that she hit someone with a car? Also, yeah, it was yeah. a couple months ago. Is she is she ever gonna get back on track? Like, she, it seemed you're right. She, it seemed like she was gonna do good for a while. She had Liz and Dick, and she was starting to make this bigger career for herself. Is she just done? Should she just stop? I think her only career right now is being not so good. <laughs> what do you think? Hmm, I think maybe she should uh, pick up wood carving or something and. <laughs> Just, just kind of settle down for a little while. I don't think that she's going to have, I don't think she can get back on track at this point. She just keeps rolling downhill and it's not getting any better. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it's getting better. I don't think she's going to get better. I think she just do us all a favor and just, just go away. Please, Lindsay, just go away and save yourself all the trouble. But I do agree. I think you're right. I think that's the only career she has right now is being a celebrity train wreck. Yep. And um, it was fun to watch at first. But after the first five years, you're just like, okay, I'm over it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> We're done. We're done. I'm bored. We would Give love me to hope else. that she would regenerate herself and like come out as like an, an a good aging star. But I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen either. All right. Well, on to a, another celebrity who just can't seem to stay in the public's good graces. Chris Brown got himself into a Twitter feud with comedian Jenny Johnson. <laughs> The exchange, um, we've edited this for younger audiences, but it started when Brown tweeted, quote, I look old as heck, I'm only 23. And then Johnson replied with, I know, being a worthless piece of crap can really age a person. And then Brown replied to that as well, with something that's wildly inappropriate. And eventually he deleted his entire Twitter account, which he has since reactivated. But what do you think? I don't know. I mean, I had some optimism for him when he was dating Rihanna, but then after that whole thing blew up and now this Twitter war, it's like, what are you doing? Come on, you're in the public eye. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think it was inappropriate for Johnson to tweet that in the first place. Like, yeah. I get that you're trying to achieve something with comedy, right. <laughs> but he, for the most part, other than his temper tantrums, he hasn't been in the public eye for more domestic abuse. He's just been in for like trashing hotel rooms. But it seemed that bringing that up I just I think was just too much, especially if he and Rihanna are getting back together. So they seem to be moving on from it. I think if they move on from it, should the rest of us move on for it or can we forgive him for it or should we what do you think? Uh, I think he needs to calm down. I mean, it's rather childish. It's just Twitter and Twitter's obviously a public viewing uh, and it's not really a good place is to have a fight. <laughs> I mean, everyone can see it. I don't know who's, what they're trying to prove by doing it all on Twitter, but I don't know. 
I'm sure it can't help mm-hmm. him one way or another, so I don't know what to say to Chris Brown. Mm-hmm. And his, <laughs> his fans are really vocal about him, too. His fans are very, very much... He still has fans? <laughs> <laughs> That's my first thought. They call themselves Team Breezy. Oh, yeah, that wasn't that his name? Yeah. Like, don't worry, I'll be back. Love Breezy. That was like yeah, his I last never, one. Yeah, I never understood why they call himself Breezy, but they call themselves Team Breezy, and they're very much, they're very quick to defend him and, and just be like. Jill Johnson now is getting uh, death threats from uh, Chris Brown's fans. She is, that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she's just like, I don't want to, she's not doing inter- interviews or anything. She just doesn't want to even talk about it, and she said she won't even apologize for it. That, that's she, right, she yeah. said that. She was just like, she's not going to apologize for it, she's not sorry it happened. She wishes that the repercussions were happening, obviously. I mean, who wants death threats? But I kind of admire that in her. Like, you yeah. go and say something, just stick to your guns. You clearly meant it, or you wouldn't have said it, you know? So yeah. I'm, I'm giving her props for that, at least. But, okay, let's move into our last topic. We're going to talk about, now, a much-loved, but maybe equally as equally disliked, <laughs> Justin Bieber. Oh, goodness. So the singer, who is Canadian, uh, got to meet the Canadian Prime Minister, and he did this in a pair of overalls. And, to make matters worse, he only had one of the straps strapped. So this is, this is the equivalent of an American meeting the president. Like, if I'm going to meet Barack Obama, I'm going to, like, be in nothing less than an evening gown. Exactly. And he shows up in overalls. Yeah. Now, now, he defends himself by saying that he was going directly from meeting fans to uh, doing performance. But even then, that's what you're wearing? Like, and the thing is, is that it's not like the prime minister just showed up to chat. You know, yeah. it's not like he's like, oh, I think I'll go check out the Justin Bieber concert today. <laughs> it, you know the prime minister is going to come. Like, I understand that, you know, he said, yes, he was doing the meet and greet, and then he went to meet the guy, and then he was do- I believe he was doing a show. And he's like, the whole thing was at a hockey arena. I don't care. He's the prime minister. <laughs> like, you meet your fans in a tux if you have to. Make it classy. Do your first show in a tux. Like, do, do that first number in a tux and then do a wardrobe change. Don't meet the prime minister in a pair of overalls. You are definitely right. It's just like, he looks like he picked up the first thing he saw on the dollar rack at Goodwill. He could probably buy a whole chain of Goodwills. You should not look like that to meet the Prime Minister. <laughs> I, what? I'm with you 100%. And like, to make matters worse, like he clearly, like first of all, these overalls, they weren't even like, like he kind of looked like a conductor from a kid's movie because they were yeah. like the kid stripes and the prime minister is there looking all dignified and in his best and I'm like you cannot defend what you're wearing. You hear that Justin? You cannot defend <laughs> what you were wearing. It cannot happen. That was not acceptable. Not classy. Not that's, classy. That's like, I don't know it. what he was trying to prove by wearing that, but... You maybe, maybe this breakup with Selena has been taking a harder toll. <laughs> yes, than he's let himself go. <laughs> yes, he's let himself go. I guarantee if he and Selena were still together, there's no way she would have let that happen. She would have been like, no, sweetie, it's the Prime Minister. <laughs> I mean, at least wear slacks and a nice shirt. Like, yeah, you did, it doesn't even have to be a tux. Just don't wear overalls. <laughs> don't try to look like a gangster. Don't try to look like anything like that. Just be nice. Just look nice. That was not nice. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. We're going to take our first commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about trailers for movies that will be released kind of around Christmas. Stay tuned. Are you looking to get involved in media, but news isn't your thing? Are you looking to be the next great sports announcer? Well, SPTV Live Sports is for you. Get involved with sports analysis, play-by-play, camera work, and more. There are plenty of ways to get involved, so what are you waiting for? SPTV, we want you to get involved. She looks good. She doesn't look jank. Don't look jank. If she looks jank, I'm totally busting it. I'll kill you. <laughs> I'll kill you. I'll kill you. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's get right into our next segment, Trailer Park, where we're going to look at movie trailers for soon-to-be-released films and give our two cents. On our movie panel tonight, I have with me Tony Zenner and Matt Cashton. So let's start with a movie that isn't actually coming out till later in January, um, Struck by Lightning. It's written by Chris Colfer, and it's starring Chris Colfer of TV's Glee. And the movie centers around Carson Phillips, uh, and he takes charge of his school's literary magazine. And the only way he can get his classmates to contribute is by blackmailing them. 
Is mm. this is is this going to be? Is he going to come out into his movie career strong at first, or is it going to be like, oh, we kind of saw that movie, but? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> this one's a tough one because. You know, you think it's a movie, it's a high school movie, right? It's just about high school and like this kid, he's going through high school, he's obviously not accepted at first, you can tell from the trailer. So I don't know if it's just going to be another one of those kid in high school movies, but there is something a little different about it. It seemed to like, it seemed to be different. There was something about it that I liked. Mm -hmm. It's definitely got that indie feel to it, and it hasn't been advertised enough, but I think it's going to be amazing. The fact that the kid is that talented to write it and star in it, I think it's going to be something special too. And it's not like it does have the indie feel. It was per, it was shown at a few film festivals mm -hmm. where it was it gained it did very well. Um, but it also it has Allison Janney in it, who is yeah. mm. a comedy legend, who's just a legend. Period. It's got Rebel Wilson, who people are just loving from Bridesmaids yep. and now Pitch Perfect and all this Yay. other stuff. <laughs> and it's also got Christina Hendricks from Mad right. Men. So oh, you man. do have a top notch cast. Which honestly, let's be honest. If and I mean Chris Colfer thrown in that too, I think I believe he's top notch. Mm -hmm. Could that be the thing that just kind of pushes him over? Bumps it? I think it might. I agree. I think so. It's something different from Glee because you know you put him in that stereotype in Glee, but now it's just something new and something different and something to push him over the edge. And I and I like it. I think it'll be good. It's got that dark humor feel to it too. Yes. I've noticed. It which does. I think that's really different for him, and I think it's really going to push him. Like you said, push him over there. He's gonna. He's gonna make this work. And you were saying it is it is different from Glee. I think it's just different, period. <clears throat> Personally, I believe, if anything, the success of this movie, beyond the cast and beyond that, I think could be just this the straight up realness mm -hmm. of what it is, because it is him and he is writing about what kind of he's going through. Right. You know? All right, let's move on to a movie that people have been talking about since the summer, if not beyond that, probably even the spring actually. The world's most popular musical finally hits the big screen and in musical form. Uh, Les Miserables, it's almost here. It's almost, it's so close. Oh. The film revolves around Jean Valjean, who's played by Hugh Jackman, who is arrested for stealing bread and sentenced to a decade of hard labor. He ends up breaking his parole in order to um, get a better life, and he's constantly hunted down by Officer Javert. And the story follows him and those who come into his life. Now, there are just too many big names in this cast. Oh, we've got Anne Hathaway, we've got Hugh Jackman, we've got Amanda Seyfried, we've got Russell Crowe, and that's just a few. That's mm -hmm. just like the top five. Right. Can this film go wrong? Absolutely not. No. No way. No. I can't see it going anywhere, but oh, no. all around, no. I have my 100% faith in this mm -hmm. film. I'm a huge musical junkie, and I'm just really excited. <laughs> I do. I haven't, I've actually never seen the whole musical in any form. But just from the trailer, I mean, I've heard about it, obviously, but from the trailer, I almost tear up every time. Every time I see Anne Hathaway singing that song and her hair has just been cut off, it's just I want to talk about moving. that. I want to talk about that oh. so badly because there's I Dreamed a Dream, which is sung by Fantine, who is played by Anne Hathaway. Because these songs are so iconic, they're always sung up, they're always pitch perfect, and they're always beautiful, and they're always, you know, they're just gorgeous and strong. And you hear the last line of that, and she is broken. She is not singing it perfectly. She is sobbing her lungs out as she's singing this. And you just feel the damage in her being. Mm -hmm. Will that be something that people like? Is that, because it does detract from the musical, which is always played so pristine and just so upright. And now we're going to get to the grit and the heart of what this war really was. Is that going to be a bonus point for it, or do you think it'll kind of affront people who are fans of the musical? I think it makes it more real. It takes away the musical aspect, but it brings in like more character, and like you feel more for her because she oh she can because she can sing beautifully, but then you also realize that she can act beautifully and have that emotion. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to draw a lot more people into it. Actually, I mean, people who really enjoy musicals. It's not a huge crowd of people. It's a very generalized fan base. But this musical, it's not that perky, happy. It's got this this deep, dark side where I just think a lot more people will relate to it. Can this bring musicals back to the Oscars? I hope. Because, <laughs> well, if you look at it, Chicago was really star-studded. This one is really star-studded. Mm -hmm. So I think they're really similar in that way. Yeah, and they are just, and not just star-studded, like, really, really good star-studded. Yeah, I don't even know how to true. word that right. It's, 
Oscar worthy stars. And I are think in it. some of these stars too are going to surprise us yeah. because when you did, I mean, you did have the stars in Dreamgirls. You had Beyonce, you had Jamie Foxx, you had Jennifer Hudson, who also won for that movie. Yes. But this one I like because it's it does have a few newcomers. Well, not, not really newcomers, but people we haven't really seen before, but not too much um, in anything big, but also people we have seen who we didn't really know they could sing. Right. Russell Crowe is going to be in there playing Javert, mm -hmm. and Javert has this amazing solo. It's called Stars. It is my favorite song, song in the whole musical, and I cannot wait to, to see what he sounds, to hear what he sounds like, because you just hear his speaking voice, mm -hmm. and you're just like, if you can translate that in a song, you win. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, I, you just win. <laughs> I'm so yeah. And then there are people we do know who can sing. We know Anne Hathaway can sing. We know mm -hmm. Amanda Seyfried can sing. Everybody knows Hugh Jackman can sing. He won a Tony. Right. Like and then there's Samantha Barks who's going to play Eponine, who, um, <clears throat> who was in the 25th anniversary concert. Um, so I mm. think I definitely I think you guys are right. I think this is going to be a no-brainer, hands mm -hmm. down. It's going to do awesome. And I think I think he could win. I think he could get some Oscar gold. All right. Lastly, let's talk about The Hobbit: An Unexpected Journey. Lord of the Rings fans have been waiting for this movie for years, for years, and now it's here. So the movie story follows the story of Bilbo Baggins, who is Frodo's uncle, mm -hmm. and it's The Hobbit is the prequel to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and Peter Jackson is back to direct. So, are you excited? Yes, <laughs> of course. Oh gosh, there's. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> I, li I like Lord of the Rings, and I, I will see this movie, but I'm not like jumping for joy about it because it's just personally not my yeah. kind of cup of tea. <laughs> if we will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> see, I've never, I haven't read the Lord of the Rings books. I tried when I was in middle school, and it was just so over my head that I was just like, I don't yeah, know it's what's out going there. on. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, it's a little much. But personally, I did like the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and I am so excited for this cast. I can't even tell you. Martin Freeman stars in it. I love Martin Freeman. Mm -hmm. uh, Rich, no, Richard Armitage. I always forget his last name. Richard Armitage is going to be in it. He is amazing. <laughs> you got Ian McKellen's coming back. Um, who else? Benedict Cumberbatch, also one of my favorites, is going to be in there somewhere. Talk about star-studded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. The main thing is, though, is that it's it's British star-studded, and I am I am an honorary like British citizen. Like, <laughs> I just, I love it. I love everything about that country. And I, so I know like a lot of their big time kind of actors. So I'm really excited just to see them. This movie was just gonna be a standalone. It was just gonna be The Hobbit right. and probably like three hours long. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, mm, let's make it a two-parter. And everybody's like, okay, I can, I can get on board with that. And it kind of repetitive. Mm -hmm. And now they're just making a whole trilogy. Right. They're just like, they're just flat out. They're like, we'll just do it in three. Why not? Why not keep it equal to Lord of the Rings? <laughs> is it too trilogy. much or is it warranted? Is this warranted? You'd probably be the best expert in this. Yes. I Well, I don't know, because I've never read The Hobbit. Have you read The Hobbit? I, I haven't read The Hobbit. I didn't read Lord of the Rings. Um, I was a big fan when they did come out, the Lord of the mm -hmm. Rings trilogy. I personally love prequels, as it is. And the fact that this is explaining the story of how those came to be, I think they need to be as in-depth as they can. And I think making such a great book, I mean, it's such a popular book. I know that, even though I haven't read it, um, into one movie would have disappointed fans big time. I think they're doing it a great um, favor by doing it in three. Mm -hmm. I don't know if three was necessary though. Uh, maybe two. I'm just I'm just not a big fan of the whole splitting the whole movies because you know if I like the movie or if I'm really into it, it just makes me wait more. I, <laughs> I, don't like I feel like if you didn't have to make Return of the King two movies, I don't think you have to make The Hobbit three. I will have to wait until I see them all to see if it was warranted or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, Peter Jackson is brilliant, especially with this trilogy, especially with Tolkien's work. As mm -hmm. we saw, he said he won the Oscar for The Return of the King for. Mm -hmm. Um, best Motion Picture, mm -hmm. and all, all three of them were nominated for countless awards. I, I kind of, I always feel like whenever they decide to split up a book, I even felt this way about Harry Potter, and I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, that when they decided to split it up, I was like, you just wanted more money. You're right. Oh, you yeah. just wanted more time, you wanted more money, you wanted another resume piece, you know, I always kind of feel that way. Um, Mind you, Harry Potter, I guess, because I'd read the book, I felt like it was a little more warranted than, mm -hmm. say, like, Twilight, but I haven't read Twilight, than, say, The Hobbit. I saw that face. <laughs> I saw that face. <laughs> no. Couldn't restrain me. No. <laughs> she likes Twilight. I don't like Twilight. Okay. That's what that happened. Let's agree to disagree. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I understood why it was warranted with... I, I, I think two parts would have been good for The Hobbit. I don't... Like I said, I don't know if two three... Probably. I don't yeah. know if three was necessary. I think one 
that would have been. I think one would have been too short. Yeah. I agree. I will agree with that. Yeah. Uh, be sure to stay with us as next up we're going to unveil our top five favorite Christmas movies. <laughs> Oh, wow. dang it. Bob Saget. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Culture Shock. It's that time of the year when Christmas trees adorn the living rooms, lights are everywhere, and TV stations all over the country play a wide array of holiday movies. So we here at Culture Shock sat down and took some time to sort out our favorites. On the panel tonight, I have with me Matt Bondi. And Lance Caster. So let's jump in and just talk about the five movies that we will not be missing this year. At number five, we have White Christmas. So White Christmas stars Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, Vera Ellen, Rosemary Clooney. It revolves around the story of a song and duo uh, dance team who teams up with a sister act in order to save a failing Vermont Inn. Um, it has everything that a person could ask for from a musical of the era of the 1940s. Do you guys know anything about this? Because White Christmas isn't, it's, it's mainly known by people who kind of like are into like old movies or are into musicals. Right. I have seen it a few times. I'm not an expert on it in any way. Yeah. But it is one of the few, the few movies of that era I will actually sit through and watch. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I just think it's a really great story. You know, it's for a good cause, you know, trying to save this inn. Um, and there's lots of good music, lots of great dancing, you know, all sorts of things. All, all sorts of things that you don't see in films these, nowadays, you know, so. I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never even heard of it, so I don't know. But do you know who Bing Crosby is? Not off the top of my head. Bro! <laughs> but he's Bing! I, I don't he know. I'm sure. I'm Christmas. sure I've, I've heard of him. But let's just, let's just jump in to number four. We have The Polar Express. I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> a little boy is starting to doubt the existence of Santa Claus. Uh, he's chosen on Christmas Eve to go travel on the Polar Express train and go to the North Pole in order to meet Santa and do all this stuff. Starring Tom Hanks and pretty right. much every voice in the movie. Well, 95% at least. Right. I just, I, I think probably the first time I watched it, I was like mesmerized by it because I'm just like, what if this happens to me? <laughs> and it, like the, the story ends, and then like and you're like, it just it touches you because you, you don't want to think of like Santa as like that thing that doesn't exist. I mean, because they have the, at the end they have that silver bell, and you can only hear it if you believe. I don't know about you, but I can hear the bells. I can hear them too. Um, you know, what's really cool about the Polar Express is how real it is. You know, I mean, it's animated, but you know, it's still so realistic. Um, I've actually heard that some people are scared away by that, but me personally, no. That was, it was one of the first, that movie when it came out, like animation was still kind of in its, not in its infancy, obviously, like it had been, but it was still kind of like, like the Toy Story, it's still very rounded and still very just, mm -hmm. Polar Express came out and it was like, there's texture and everything looks, it looks more realistic. There's still some problems that it, that it had with the animation and. Yeah, and just the voice acting too, Tom Hanks and everything, it just great. adds to it. Perfectly. It's just Tom Hanks. You see Tom Hanks and you're like, yep, I will be there. All right, let's move on to number three. We have Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. All right. We all know the story. Rudolph is rejected by his fellow reindeer and he goes on an adventure to find a place where he belongs. He ends up meeting Hermie the Elf mm -hmm. and the Abominable Snowman and he finds the whole island of misfit toys. And I, I'm just really glad that one of our, that acclamation is is on this list because I think all the claymations back then they have um, Santa Claus is coming to town uh, year without a Santa Claus mm -hmm. something about Baby New Year I can't remember but they've got so many like claymations from this year but I, I will I will definitely say that Rudolph tops the list of all of those right of that group Rudolph is definitely the one that stands out I mean everybody knows the song you know you have the movie it makes everybody feel great you know you all fit in I mean Hermie he wants to be a dentist I mean an elf wants to be a dentist I mean come on right that doesn't that's not normal even yeah. a person who wants to be a dentist is not considered quote-unquote normal in our right. society right and then Rudolph has this big bright red nose and everybody just hates him but I think it's the coolest thing ever I mean come on you get to stand out hey I've got a red nose and I can shine through the fog you know take that other reindeer. As a kid, that was the one movie each year I absolutely had to see. 
Like, if it was at my grandma's house, I'd be like, Grandma, I'm watching Grant <laughs> Rudolph. All right? Like, just sitting in front of the TV and just, like, my parents, that no one disturbed me. I'd be, like, <laughs> quoting the lines. Like, and I'd always forget what happened each year. So I'm just like, there's a giant abominable snow. He's going to eat them. <laughs> He's going to get them. You, oh, no. you always never remember that it's yeah. okay. Yeah. It was it's, just, I, I watch it now, and I'm like, oh, wait. Like, it's fine. We're fine. It's good. But let's move on now to number two. And this is the absolute Christmas classic, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the animated, right. the, the cartoon, the old one. I dare you to find anyone who doesn't know this film or what it's about. Just anyone. Because I'm guessing you guys saw this as kids, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. What, what stuck with you? What do you guys remember from watching it as kids? You're a mean one. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Grinch. <laughs> I love that song, but just, like, you have this cute little girl who's just staring down this big bad <laughs> yeah, and just like this big bad myth that the adults are all scared of and she's just like hi how are you and he's just like oh thank you and and his heart goes two sizes yeah and just too, breaks out it's too big the thing that st st stands out for me is max the dog you know with that, <laughs> that that reindeer get up you know he he's just he's at one point he's riding on the sled he's all excited and then the grinch throws him out there to pull the sled down this mountain <laughs> and he just gets ran over and everything you know and like you just love that dog you just feel so terrible for that dog what's another thing that part another part that stands out for me is when they're all singing around the tree because um, I think that's the real meaning of Christmas. You know, you don't have the gifts anymore. And they're all singing like it doesn't matter. You know, the presents don't matter. It's being together, being, you know, with your friends and your family, and just being able to celebrate something that's greater than gifts. That, that was always kind of the piece that I remember, that I remember loving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we've come to that moment. At number one. This is kind of scary. I'm, I'm waiting and getting anticipation here. Elf. Good. Starring Will Ferrell. The uh, story revolves around Buddy the Elf, who is adopted by one of Santa's elves, and he has to go off to America to find out his true identity. So, I actually have never seen the whole thing of Elf. How is that even possible? I've seen a little, because I don't, I'm not a Will Ferrell fan, and I just kind of saw him, and I went, eh. I've seen bits and pieces of it, and some of them are funny, and some of them aren't, you know, give and take, it's a Will Ferrell movie. But I, I won't deny that it is a very much cherished and loved neoclassic. And I, I won't deny that it definitely, I think, deserves top spot. Well, speaking about Will Ferrell, I mean, a lot of his other works are a lot more crude. You know, they're a lot ruder. And this, this is a great, great movie. I mean, it's funny, but in a very kid-friendly way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it great. You know, he'll go up to a raccoon and try to hug it, and he'll just get his face mauled off. Or he'll be like, Santa, Santa, I know him! And all that kind of stuff, you know? And, like, he puts syrup on his spaghetti, you know, he jumps on a tree, knocks it over. You know, he's just trying to be the fun-loving guy that we all want to be. <laughs> oh. it's, it's Will Ferrell acting like a man-child, which right. he does fantastically. But now that it's actually kid-friendly, Parents are like, we can take our kids to see this, and that's what I think made it so. And it, it is a fun movie to watch. And I mean, I'm a Will. I mean, I like Will Ferrell and his other movies too. So I mean, just watch. I haven't seen Elf in a while, but just watching it, it's funny. You have Zoe Deschanel, I believe, right, in there correct. as well, and yep. she. I love her too. Um, just uh, and I, I can't think who else is in there, but you have the you have his dad who's just like this grouch and everything, and then he, they, they start getting him to sing. Um, Santa's coming to town, and it's mm. like they save Christmas and everything. It's the just the spirit of Christmas. It's this big adventure that <laughs> happens in New York, I think is where right. it is. Yeah. Yes. I'm just glad that we can have a movie that's made more recently that can be considered a classic. And I think Elf definitely, like from the moment it came out in theaters, was definitely that. Mm -hmm. So, but that's all we have for you tonight. We'll be back with more culture shock in the new year. But until then, have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, and a Happy New Year. <laughs>